Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom, a free service that helps high school students with their math problems. For this video, I'm working through question 13 of um, exercise 5G of the Cambridge Extension 2 math textbook. So I recently did a video where I worked through question 11b. And uh, question 13 is the second of three questions where a student has asked for a bit of help. Um, so in question 13, we're told that two spheres have equations magnitude of r vector minus the vector 5, negative 6, 3, that magnitude 7, and then the magnitude of r vector minus the vector negative 3, 2, 7 is equal to 5. So they're just the classic definitions of um, the vector equation of a sphere. Uh, we're asked to show that the spheres touch each other at a single point. Um, so there's probably a few ways you can go about this, but the way I'll work through is what strikes me as, I think, the simplest way. I think it, it kind of makes the most intuitive sense. So I'll just um, put this aside. Now to start, um, let's just write up what we're dealing with. So we've got uh, sphere 1 and the vector equation we were given was uh, the magnitude of r vector minus essentially the, the, the center of the sphere vector, which was 5, negative 6 and 3. So the magnitude of that is equal to 7. That's uh, the vector way to rep represent the sphere. I think though, putting this in um, Cartesian form, the Cartesian equation uh, will, will make it a bit easier to, to grapple with. So let's write out the Cartesian equation. So that would be, um, this, this r vector is essentially x, y, z. So it's some x minus five, some y minus negative six, and then some z minus three. So we'll get, x minus 5 squared plus y minus negative 6, so y plus 6 squared plus z minus 3 squared is equal to 7 squared. And what I might do is I might just annotate on um, essentially uh, uh, what, what are the, the coordinates of the, the center point here. So here we've got x1 is equal to because it's x minus the coordinate. Um, uh, y1 will be negative 6 and then z1 will be 3. So essentially just giving a name for each of these coordinates of the center of the sphere. And we'll call the radius r1 which is 7 because it's the radius squared. So we'll see why that, that's helpful um, later. Um, now let's do the same thing for sphere 2. So we've got our uh, sphere 2, the uh, vector equation was the magnitude of r vector minus the center vector, which in this case was negative 3, 2 and 7. And it's the magnitude of that is equal to 5. So again, the Cartesian equation for this one would be x minus negative 3 or x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z minus 7 squared is equal to 5 squared. And again, I'll just annotate on here uh, x2 is equal to negative 3, y2 is equal to 2, and z2 would be equal to 7, and r2, the radius, would be 5. All right, now um, we're being asked to show um, that the spheres touch at a single point. Now, the way I'm going to go about this um, is to kind of make use of the fact that if you had two spheres, maybe I'll just draw up, say, sphere one. So that's a, a sphere maybe another sphere that's just touching at a single point, which is kind of what we're dealing with. Now, if I took the, the, the center of the first sphere and the 
center of the second sphere, and if I join those up, I'll call that, that distance that is traveled in three dimensions, x, y, and z, I'm going to call that d. So that distance is d. And um, uh, in terms of the, the individual spheres, so for sphere, sphere, sphere 1, if I, if I look at the distance from the centre to this point, that's um, naturally going to be the radius, so R1. And for the second sphere, that distance would be R2. And from this simple diagram, um, what we can see is that if... The, the total distance between the two centre points, D, is equal to exactly the sum of the radiuses, R1 plus R2, then that uh, indicates um, that it touches at one point, which is what we're after. And uh, hopefully you could kind of deduce that if D was greater than R1 plus R2, then we would say... Um, uh, no intersection because the spheres would be too far away for there to be any overlap. And then naturally if D is less than R1 plus R2, we get um, basically a, a circle would be the plane of intersection and there's ways you could then work out what is that circle because um, when, when the two spheres overlap and you kind of slice down the middle, what you'll essentially see is a circle. Like if you slice a sphere at any point, you'll, you'll see a circle. Um, but we're, we're mainly concerned with this first result here. So basically, if we can show that this distance is equal to the sum of these two radiuses, then that's how we can show that they touch at a single point. So naturally, the question is, how do we calculate the distance? And interestingly, this is not a formula that is expressly laid out in the Cambridge textbook, but nonetheless, I think it's probably one that's worth knowing. Um, it's not a hard one to kind of grapple with. Um, uh, if we say the distance d squared, uh, you may kind of remember in two dimensions, you'd kind of just go um, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, you kind of take the difference of the coordinates in each axis, square them and add them up, that's the distance squared. Well, now that we've got three um, axes, we just add on the third one, so z2 minus z1 squared. So now all we have to do is plug in these numbers, which is why I thought it worth noting them, take the square root to get d by itself, and we can see is that equal to r1 plus r2. So here d squared would be x2, which is negative 3, minus x1, which is 5, squared, plus y2, which is 2, minus negative 6, squared, plus z2 is 7, minus 3 squared. So that's going to be negative 3 minus 5 would be negative 8 squared plus 2 minus negative 6, 2 plus 6 is 8 squared, 7 minus 3 is 4 squared. So that's going to be 64 plus 64 plus 16. My mental arithmetic's not good enough to do that in my head. So we're going to go 64 plus 64 plus 16, 144. And the square root of that is, it should be 12. Yeah. So therefore, D is equal to 12. So that's the distance between the two centre points. Now notice that 12 is equal to R1 plus R2 because 7 plus 5 is also equal to 12. So therefore, um, touch at single point. Boom. All right, so that, that's how you tackle that question. Um, as I mentioned, I think there are probably other ways you could go about it. Um, but to me, I think this is definitely the most intuitive, the most straightforward. Um, um, you're really just using a distance formula that, that um, should be quite familiar to you just based on the, the one we're used to in two dimensions. 
and then it just becomes a simple comparison. Um, does one number equal the sum of two other numbers? So hopefully you've found that explanation helpful and you've been able to follow along. Um, if it was helpful for you, please be sure to give the video a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. All right, tick boom.